Good morning, everybody. Um, I'm here today to share with you the journey of Gujarat Sister Sri Lanka, moving from charity-based to right-based approach. In 2015 Congregational Direction Statement, invited us to develop a clear strategic plan integrating spirituality, justice and peace with best ministry practices. So holding ourselves accountable to monitor and evaluate the results. So responding to this invitation, the Good Shepherd uh, Sri Lanka developed a strategic plan to move forward. So uh, when you think of the background, the Sri Lanka holds a long term of history on child protection. And we, the Gucciput sisters, are the pioneers to introduce institutional care in our country. And we start our, uh, started our orphanage in 1896. So it's a very long term. And we have at present 17 child care centers, one detention home, and a safe home, all residential care programs, providing child protection support to 800 children across Sri Lanka in 2016. So having, holding on to all these programs, there was an urgent need to review the practices and programs to our children. So right-based approach also in accordance with the principles of the Convention on the Rights of the Child, non-discrimination, best interest of the child, right to life, survival and development, and right to participation. The primary objective of our strategic plan was transition from institutionalized care to deinstitutionalization of children to community-based programs. Having aware of that we were not seeing the desired changes in the children in Good Shepherd residential care centers. So some of the key result areas to change in our strategic plans are Good Shepherd best practice in child protection established and children are supported, empowered communities for effective child protection, and support government in enhancing national, regional child protection systems, scales up and roll out a system approach to child protection within Gujarat, Sri Lanka. So at present, we focused on uh, the first one, best practice in child protection, and also empowered communities effective child protection. So we work in two processes. One is uh, regarding our institutions. We have about 17 institutions and actually we cannot uh, close down all these centers at once. But we have uh, reflecting on how to give this best practice to our children. So we have started uh, giving training on case file management and to have a better staff with, with various skills and also capacity training on social work, uh, psychosocial counseling, etc. So community-based child protection model also focused on the best interest of the child. So the outer circles are the primary uh, responsible people to protect the children's lives. So in our project, we mainly focus on children, family, and community. In right-based approach, we feel that children are empowered, they are motivated, and they are also supported in various ways to uplift their lives and also they are made confident to stand on their own. And I feel because in right-based approach, 
the root causes are addressed because of this process are owned by the program participants and our children know their rights and how to access them. So with this background in mind, we started moving and started community-based child protection programs in Sri Lanka in many parts of our country. And it, as an entry point, we started creating child-friendly safe spaces. So this is a physical space where children can come daily and be relaxed, happy, and learn many things in this area. So uh, our focus of activities are in three prongs. For children, we have child-centered teachings and learning, learning their rights and responsibilities, and a lot of nutrition programs are in introduced, empowering children to keep safe. They have a lot of group games, play, play times to, to interact with one another, and also spiritually and psychological supports are given during this program. For family, we form forming self-help groups for mothers and the parenting skills are introduced, awareness of child rights, especially to education and protection and introducing income generating activities. Also for community, community awareness programs are conducted and also community is empowered to work together on this project and also engagements of supervisors in the plantation area and community leaders as well as the government officers who are engaged in social service activities in these areas. So this is our projects. Our projects, the pilot projects were started in 2017 in northern northwest province of our country. And also the, the second one is, uh, we started in 2018, that is in tea plantation area. We are working in three estates in one province. And also we just started another project in eastern side of the uh, country and it's very new to the, uh, we have just started it. And also during this two years time, we have uh, engaged with 1,045 children. And also all together in our project location, we have engaged with 2,128 people. And we have already started 25 self-help groups and the others are on the process. It, this is some kind of achievement for us during this short period of two, two years. So as we were moving on, we actually felt like, well, just to evaluate and see whether we are on the right track. So we did a research uh, during 2019 February, and these are the results research findings. Uh, we say overall findings show that community-based child protection created positive mindsets among the families and community. Children's participation is very high in research locations, interest in their studies and know their rights and also health programs are very high. So children and parents interactions are very visible positive transformation in community-based child protection families. Child-friendly safe spaces created opportunities for children to interact with one another and develop their skills. Overall improvement in children's educational performance. This we can see in their um, education records, reports and attendance records says that they, there is a greater improvement. Children were happy and active, learn good habits. Participation of male members of the community to be further encouraged because in, especially in tea plantation area, the fathers never, never take the responsibilities. So especially they are the mothers only, the female 
side only that do most of the domestic uh, activities. So some of the other positive observations that we have found, the women are empowered through creating self-help groups, income generating activities are introduced, parents are aware of their responsibilities towards their children. The communities are empowered to take responsibility to protect their children in in west northwest area we found in uh, in uh, 2015 uh, statistics is that the highest number of sexual abuses are take place in this area because of the unawareness of the and irresponsibility of the parents or the elders in the communities so greater collaboration of like-minded organizations schools especially uh, the Gujarat schools are really supporting us and some local government agencies and also greater support from the funding agencies also great support from the congregation through Gujarat International Foundation this is uh, they are the backup for us to it's a great encouragement for us to move forward to achieve all these things we also have been undergoing a lot of challenges. It was not an easy process, and uh, this is a long-term uh, re realization, and then we have been going through a lot of reflections, how to move about, and there are a lot of uh, restrictions, especially within the sisters' communities. The sisters, changing of the mindset is very, very, very difficult. So attitudes and resistance from our own sisters in communities, the, the fear of change and lack of trust towards this new approach. As one of the sisters asked yesterday, what will happen to us? Same questions are going on within our province. Still, if we, you know, transition period started for children, if the centers are not there, what will happen to us? So the lack of skills and reluctance to gain new skills that are required to respond to the emerging needs of the society. This is also very much visible in it is a hard process. So the, from the external parties, lack of cooperation by beneficiary communities at the initial phase of the project because of the fear of religious conversion. So uh, the many of the parts uh, uh, that we find other religions. So whenever we, they see us with habits, they think that we have come to convert them. Attitudes of the church authority, which are not familiar and not receptive to sisters doing right-based social services. And attitudes and receiving mentality of the people in the communities. Whenever they see religious coming to the communities, they want something to get. Not, not, they are empowering, but you know, some material goods they really expect from us. And difficulty in employing professional staff in these areas, because these are very far rural areas. And also motivating the women to form the self-help groups to empower themselves. So as a summary, we can say in residential care services, in 2016, we had 19 centers with 800 children. And 2019, we have 17 centers with 480 children because we started uh, reintegrating some of the children who have been with us in long term, they'd be 15, 13, 15 years with us. Yes. And community based child protection programs, actually, we never had anything in 2016. By 2005, 19, we have five locations reaching out to 1,045 children. So, children have a right to be in the family. And they claim all these rights from us. So we as duty bearers 
are accountable and responsible to fulfill their needs. So therefore, as Good Shepherd Sri Lanka, we commit ourselves to implement this model in various parts of our country and create that better world where children will enjoy their rights. This is our commitment. Thank you.